We want to honor four individuals who have been particularly engaged with their community and with our city. Um, each of them have made contributions in different ways, uh, and they're all remarkable. And that you know, they're not they're they're uh, they're examples of this, but there are many more. But um, but these people are worthy of being honored. And so, council, let's like come down and make some presentations. What we did here is I just asked each of our city council uh, members. To, uh, to think about this and, and uh, give an award to an outstanding person who lived in their council districts. So we have four council districts in Mill Creek and the uh, mayor is at large. So I'm gonna let them shine tonight and make uh, awards. And the first, we'll go by order of council districts. So Sylvia Catman represents uh, district one on the west side of our city, take away. Can we give a round of applause to our very incredible mayor? a really good mayor. Um, so now we get to the good part. Sorry, Jeff, you had the boring part, but we get we get the good part. Um, before I read my little citation, I, I, I feel lucky because, you know, we got to pick who we wanted to receive this award. And, and um, I knew right off the bat that I wanted to honor this woman. Um, there was no competition in my mind. I was like, this is who I'm picking. Nobody else can pick her. Um, this, this is what we're doing. So let me read this and, and, and then I'll present the award. Um, this is for Diane Angus. A Mill Creek native born and raised here, Diane Angus started her long tenure in community service more than 35 years ago. As a community leader, friend, neighbor, and small business owner of one of Mill Creek's best kept secrets, 42nd Street Greenhouse, Diane has been a steady and trusted fixture of Mill Creek, particularly West Mill Creek, in an ever-changing and sometimes uncertain municipal environment. The first time I met Diane, I showed up to a community council meeting and I wanted to join the council. She was warm and welcoming and I was immediately in awe of his, her historical and institutional knowledge she had for her community. Through the many years of watching Diane lead the Mill Creek Community Council as chair, I was always impressed by her quiet but effective ability to lead. She asked fair and thoughtful questions, offered collaborative suggestions, and always showed the utmost patience and respect for others in the heat of conflict. Thank you for that lesson. All while maintaining her ground as a devoted local steward, always considering the welfare of the greater community. Diane has seen Mill Creek in so many different phases, from the small suburban landscape with wide open spaces and farming and industrial uses, to developing county township, to the incorporation of our Mill Creek city. And she has never wavered in her loyalty to the people who live here. She has cult cultivated an attitude to treat everyone as a friend, that people deserve the benefit of the doubt, and most people want to be good neighbors if you just give them the chance to do so. She's always been vocal about the exclusivity of this great place being open to anyone. To Diane, everyone is welcome here. She has long been the eyes and ears for this community and countless residents have looked to her for guidance and support about local issues over the years. If it mattered to you, it mattered to Diane. Um, and, and before I present this award, I, I, you know, here's a little bit of Mill Creek trivia. Um, Diane, I ran against Diane for this seat that I have now. Um, and w when we got through the prim primary, it was me and Diane in the general election and everyone, I was so scared because Diane knows everyone and everyone loves and respects her. And I knew that I had my work cut out for her, for me. Um, and, and I think that we are so lucky because Diane just continued in her role and, and she's just done such a great job for so long. Um, so with that, Diane is setting an incredibly high standard for everyone who gets this, this award um, here on that out. We are so lucky to have had her leadership and look forward to her continued friendship and support for Mill Creek. I'm pleased to honor Diane Angus for Mill Creek's first Community Champion Award.
And Diane, I know that uh, I know Jamie Walker, who's the who's your successor and chair of the Mocha Community Council, wants to make a presentation. But Jamie, come on up. But before I do that, I want to say something about Diane. Uh, Diane, it's Diane's fault that we are a Mill Creek community. Um, when we were a community council before incorporation, Diane was chair of Mill Creek. I was chair of Mount Olympus. Um, and, and we met together. I think Rita Lund was chair of Canyon Rim at the time, and then Amy McConkey. Um, and, uh, and anyway, we, used, we, we decided to get together as community council chairs. And, uh, and, and we had to prioritize um, improvements that Salt Lake County was asking to make in each of our community council districts. And, and we started talking about these things and Diane had this, this sidewalk that uh, they, had a, they had a resident of a care center who was killed on 9th East because there was no sidewalk. And, and uh, we heard that as community council chairs and we just said, what are we doing? You know, and uh, some of our, the other community councils, we were, the, the projects that we were thinking about, we thought were just completely frivolous compared to that. And so we said, you know what? We should all get together and prioritize these as a community. And we started doing that at Diane's suggestion. And I think that was the was like the spark that that suggested that 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 Mill Creek community should be comprised of all four of those community councils. We're stronger together, and uh, and we all have common common interest. So thank you, Diane. I think Sylvia, I'll just say ditto to a lot that she said, but I asked a few of the council people to put some things together uh, as far as thoughts. And uh, I just wanted to read those. Uh, Diane's been tireless in her service for decades. Is that true? You're tireless? <laughs> I imagine she's very tired, but... For many years prior to Venture Out, she was instrumental in organizing community events. Uh, I remember years ago attending the car shows and the, the big nightly movies held at Big Cottonwood Park. She worked for years with the county to influence zoning to protect Mill Creek's uniqueness. Uh, last year, she helped uh, do something she'd worked on for maybe decades, uh, placing some emergency cash shipping containers in Mill Creek so that now we're a little more safer than we were a few years ago. Uh, she was a champion of the members of the community to be able to fully voice their concerns and work to represent those uh, to the planning authorities. So the Mill Creek Community Council, you've set uh, a great foundation for those of us coming after you, Diana, and we just wanted to share this uh, gift with you and say thank you. Thanks, Diane. Can I have uh, Tom DeSiron from District 2 come down, please? Oh, okay. presents this award to Diane Angus in recognition of 35 years of outstanding leadership and service to our community, 1987 to 2020. Thanks again. Great, well, it's a uh fun to try to follow that. Uh, I'd like to thank our mayor uh, for his speech earlier. I think my favorite part was the fact that first, first sentence out was that he was going to try really hard not to tear up and then immediately started tearing up. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, really, really excited that we're having this event. Uh, and I'm really excited to be able to honor Pepa Tafoy. Um, 
Peppa has been uh, deeply invested in Mill Creek for years. He's made it his personal mission to volunteer. Sorry, thank you. Uh, Peppa's made it his personal mission to find ways to volunteer to help everyone in our community. Uh, and has always had a welcoming smile. Uh, you know, being uh, on the city council, I get to meet a lot of people and I always have to kind of re-meet them because I can't quite always keep a name. Uh, but I think that Peppa has never met a stranger. He's always been so welcoming, always met people with the biggest smile. And you know, when you meet Peppa, he meets you like an old friend. Uh, Peppa's worked diligently uh, with the Utah Food Bank over the past you know, five plus years, organizing, distributing food weekly to hundreds of our neighbors. And incredibly, he was able to keep this going uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, at the time when we needed it more than ever. Beyond that, each Thanksgiving, Peppa organizes a free holiday dinner, as well as entertainment at a local restaurant for our unsheltered neighbors and friends at the Midvale Homeless Shelter. Peppa has also been a huge supporter of the Unified Fire and Unified Police, and has worked to organize his community to be responsive in the event of an emergency. Today is a day that we celebrate the incredible members of our community, and I can't think of anyone more deserving in my district than Peppa. He's been a stalwart community volunteer uh, who's provided support to thousands of those in need over many years, always smiling and always greeting us like an old friend. Thanks, Peppa. Peppa, Peppa's work at the food bank distribution is truly remarkable. He is there every week and, uh, and unloading pallets, helping carry stuff for the, with all the young kids and all that and organizing the volunteers. And you've helped so many people, Peppa. You, uh, you're really a community champion, so thank you. Councilmember Sherry Jackson from District 3. Hello. Um, I'm happy tonight to um, honor Nate Gibby from Canyon Room Neighborhood and from District 3. Nate would much rather give someone an award than receive one himself. But he absolutely deserves recognition for the amazing work he has done in our community and the connections and volunteerism his effort and vision have fostered. Nate recognized that neighbors had few opportunities to really meet and get to know each other. If your children don't go to school together or you don't attend the same church, then it is easy to coexist and not truly interact with those in your neighborhood. Thus, six years ago, Nate formed Canyon Room as community to build neighborhood connections and help Canyon Room residents get to know and learn about one another. Through Canyon Room as community, Nate hosted a symposium series where Canyon Room and Mill Creek residents with interesting life experiences shared their stories with the community. The symposiums have featured Canyon Rim and Mill Creek residents, um, one who was an astronaut, another an opera performer, gardeners, beekeepers, a couple who hiked the entire Appalachian Trail, and a mountaineer who summited Mount Everest twice. Nate's natural friendliness and ability to talk with anyone helped him to meet these amazing people and to create a venue for neighbors to meet them too. Furthering the reach of Canyon Room as community, Nate and his group of volunteers organized a day of service every July for the past five years. Service opportunities are, identi are identified and coordinated. Procedures were established to easily marshal the hundreds of volunteers to the various opportunities to serve. Nate works to organize the event, secure, secure sponsors to help fund projects, and to provide lunch and breakfast for the volunteers, and he recruits hundreds of volunteers to carry out the work. Service projects have benefited organizations such as the Malihe Free Clinic that's located here in Mill Creek, the School of the Deaf and Blind, Peace House, the International Rescue Committee, the Sharing Place, Art Access, and Ukrainian Refugees, and more. Volunteers have also been organized to help clean up Esther's Garden by the Synagogue on Heritage Way, do graffiti cleanup, build little free libraries, clean up the naturescape at Canyon Room Academy, and this past summer, they built the outdoor classroom and garden at Mill Creek Elementary. 
The day of service regularly involves over 500 volunteers who participate in thousands of hours of service each year. Neighbors working alongside each other to benefit their community and get to know each other. It's an amazing event. In 2020, when we were in the throes of COVID, Nate was not deterred. He hosted podcasts for Canyon Rim and Mill Creek residents to learn coping mechanisms to help in dealing with COVID-related stressors and another on fitness tips to get you to help, to help get you through a pandemic. The day of service was modified to a socially distanced donation drive benefiting several organizations. Canyon Rim residents participated in record numbers, thankful for the opportunity to do something for the community and help those organizations struggling through the pandemic. If this isn't enough, Nate also volunteers on the Canyon Room Community Council and the Mill Creek Business Council, and he has just launched the Mill Creek Miracle Campaign. The Mill Creek Miracle is what happens when residents, businesses, schools, and other causes come together in new and innovative ways to engage and support one another. Once again, Nate is building his community and working to form connections between Mill Creek businesses and residents. I'm grateful for this opportunity to recognize Nate Gibby. Nate truly is a champion in our community because he is a champion for our community. His desire to build connections and help Mill Creek become a community that cares has made Mill Creek a better place to live, and I'm thankful for that. So thanks, Nate Gibby. Thanks, Nate. And uh, Nate is the kind of guy who, when you show up at his volunteer event on Saturday morning, uh, gives you a bagel, and, uh, and then uh, after that, hands you a weed whacker and says, go up into the garden and whack some weeds, Jeff. And then he, when he, I come back down, and I've got, uh, like, I'm totally covered in, in weed debris and stuff like that. I've got shorts on, a pair of white socks. He says, now you've got to talk to the TV cameras. <laughs> I had to throw away my shoes and, and, and my socks. They were just so, so outrageously uh, entwined with like little pieces of vegetation. But anyway, that's the kind of guy that gets people in Mill Creek uh, motivated to, to get out and, and do work for our community. So thank you, Nate. So uh, uh, Bev Weepy, District 4. Good evening, friends. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, before before I, I say anything about my uh, community champion, I wanted to just add that Peppa and his wife are quite the pickleballers. In fact, I can't beat them, so. <clears throat> A quote by N Nelson Mandela, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived, it is what difference we have made in the lives of others. When our Weepy family first moved to the East Mill Creek area early in the 80, 1980s, Fred was in the LDS Stake Presidency of the East Mill Creek Stake. The Healy's and many others welcomed, welcomed us with open arms in the neighborhood. My siblings and I attended elementary, middle school, and high school with his kids. My best friend in second grade is his daughter-in-law, Mindy Monson Healy. My memories of the Healy's were mainly of his son, Travis. If any of you know Travis, he was quite the class clown. Much to my surprise, he gained the love of Mindy during our high school years. And I love that our children actually grew up together. Throughout my years of growing up in the neighborhood, I knew Coach Fred mentored many of my friends and boys in baseball. Not a typical Polynesian sport, but we knew. We all knew Coach Fred. As an adult, I knew Fred on a more professional, yet personal level as a mentor. He was instrumental in the incorporation of Mill Creek City, his resilience in seeing a bigger picture of what could be, and the potential for self-determination is why we are here today. Fred always saw the bigger picture. He supported the inception of our great city of Mill Creek as a mayoral candidate and served on our planning commission for five years. I know he can't see the fruits of his labor, but his posterity will, and you should all be very proud. Fred was a visionary, a connector, a builder, and so much more. He built community, volunteerism, businesses, but mostly people. 
Fred was nothing without his life partner, Jill. Behind every good man is a better woman. Together, they hosted foreign students who lived with them and attended the University of Utah. They served others in the smallest yet kindest ways, like shoveling driveways and taking meals to widows and widowers. Their children also joined in their acts of service over the last 40 plus years. Today, their grandchildren can be found around the neighborhood doing exactly what Fred and Jill did. Fred was not only a successful businessman, but he has been a volunteer for, uh, with the East Mill Creek Lions Club for as long as I can remember. If anyone attended the 4th of July parade, you would have seen Fred, his wife Jill, and their family serving breakfast at any of the family activities or games all day long at Evergreen Park or in the parade. I'm not sure whether Fred's grandchildren or children uh, got their infectious, humorous characteristics from him, but I could safely say it was probably from Jill. Tonight is not to take away from Fred, but what made Fred who he is in our community. This award also goes to his wife, Jill, his children, and his grandchildren. The legacy Fred has left will not only be as a pillar in our community, but as a faith faithful servant in his church, a loving husband, father, and grandfather. He loved his community, but he loved his family more. A life well lived is a life well loved. I am so honored to present the first Community Champion Award to Fred Healy and his family. And I would like to call Jill Healy up to accept the award. And if I can also, before we clap, this Healy family is so big, I wasn't sure that this room was going to be big enough. Can you all take a moment and please stand? Come on up, Jill. And I'd like to give Jill just a few moments, to, a few words to yeah, we'll say to everyone. Jill. Thank you. Thanks. Fred really did love this community. And when she says that he served the lions, I will tell you that when they ask Fred Healy to serve the lions and Fred Healy volunteers, it's not just volunteering Fred Healy. It's Fred Healy and Jill, Fred Healy and Jill, and seven kids. It's Fred Healy, Jill, seven kids and seven spouses, and 35 grandkids. Our whole family is there on the 4th of July, and he really has taught them to serve their community through that, just that one day. He loved running for mayor. When he threw in his hat in January, he really felt like that was something he was supposed to do. And it was fun. It was a lot of work. Um, but these grandkids, our kids, they were amazing. When we had our kickoff party at um, the gymnastics place down on Highland Drive in 33rd South, there were 54 people in turquoise t-shirts saying Fred Healy for mayor. Um, one of my little grandsons, whenever they're having a game, he'll say, "Who's who are they versing? And the first time he said that, I said, I, I went like, what do you mean? And he said, well, like, who are they versing? And I finally realized he meant, who are they playing? Like, who are they against? So when Fred started running for mayor, he wanted to know who he was versing. So we told him the other people that were running for mayor and Jeff Silverstrini, sorry, we were versing you. And <laughs> <laughs> you were a bad person at that time. And <laughs> but then when uh, June came and Fred's health was just not good enough to keep it going. He was in the hospital and they came in and said, you are going to need to come to the hospital morning and night to have an infusion. And I said, oh, he can't do that. And they said, what do you mean he can't do that? And I said, he still works full time. He's running for mayor. He can't do that. And they said, well, let us have a meeting. So they had a little meeting and decided that he could have his treatments at St. Mark's Hospital once a day. It still was going to make it too hard. The doctor said, you, you need to not run for mayor. This is too much. So when he withdrew and publicly put it in the newspaper that he was withdrawing and that he was moving his allegiance to Jeff Silverstrini and asked the community to do the same, we had to teach our grandchildren 
that we weren't first seeing Jeff Silverstreet anymore. <laughs> we were for him. And, and I cannot tell you how many times over the last few years Fred commented, it's a good thing I didn't, I didn't get do that. I could not do it. And Jeff is doing such a fabulous job. So Jeff, thank you so much for taking over and doing that. And thank you to the, to the community. We have felt a lot of outpouring of love and support from, from Mill Creek over the past few months, and we appreciate it, and we really appreciate this award. Our family thinks he's our hero, and we're glad you think he's a hero, too. Thank you. So I have to I have to say something about my friend Fred and my friends Jill too. Um, you know, uh, Fred and I started out on great terms. You know, we worked together uh, toward the incorporation of this city, and then uh, we were both stubborn stubborn cusses, and we uh, and we both wanted to run for mayor, and uh, th that was a little awkward in a, in a way. But uh, but we did things uh, differently than a lot of candidates opposing each other might do. I, I still remember walking around Eastwood Elementary School with Jill Healy, picking up both of our yard signs that we'd put out all over the place. And they would pick up mine and give them to me, and I'd, we'd pick up theirs and give them to them. You know, uh, we, had a, we had a joint campaign event at Marie Callender's at, where, we, where we held court and, uh, and fed pie to people. And, and then we got accused of, of being collusive because we could campaign. How could you be in the same room with somebody, you know? But I tell you, when I walked Fred's neighborhood, even, even way beyond his neighborhood, the whole city, the, this whole city loved Fred Healy, okay? This, Fred Healy was their soccer coach. They knew him from church. They, they just knew what a good man he was. And uh, it, it's really remarkable. And I, you know, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for Fred and for, and for his family. He was truly a, a marvelous guy. And, uh, you know, but for, uh, but for uh, the accident of his, of his illness, he might be standing here today and he would have been a good mayor too. So could, could we get all four of the awardees to come up here and get a picture with the city council? We'd really like to do that.